1027 WNEW, the Rock of New York with the Spin Doctor sending that out to Jill heading into the city to celebrate her birthday tonight. Yeah. That's stockbroker uh, Dave's wife, right? Yeah. Happy birthday, Jill. It's Opie. It's Anthony. She's celebrating it with him, right? I do believe so, yes. Not with Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> she is a married woman. Yeah. Seems to be what attracts Jerry these days. What is up with Jerry Seinfeld? I don't know. We'll have to talk about him He's a little bit. He's going later. after all our girls. Leave some for us, will you, Jerry? I need women. <laughs> Kramer. <laughs> women, bring them here. <laughs> we got lots to do today. Yeah, Actually, I want to know uh, where we're meeting tonight. Meeting? Are we going to be at, in Times Square when the Yankees um, win it all tonight? Yeah, I think that's the party central, Times Square. All right. Spill out onto the streets all drunk. It, hey, Yankees, number one. Woo! Is it painfully obvious that we're winning the World Series today? Get the brooms. Do the Padres honestly have a chance? And I know someone out there is freaking out. Don't jinx the team. Stop. I better call the fan. Oh, my God, they're jinxing the team. As you've heard, yes, on the fan. Uh, no one, no team ever coming back from a three-game deficit. I learned everything about the World Series today listening to those guys. More than I ever, ever wanted to know. They really need to start talking about hockey and football because they're running out of facts about World Series games. Thank God the Yankees will sweep this thing. Yeah. Just end it. That way we won't have to go to extended radio shows on... Uh... But there's so many negative people out there. You know, we're about to win another World Series. And mm -hmm. people are like, yeah, but Bernie Williams probably won't be a Yankee next year. Can we talk about that for an hour? <laughs> Let's enjoy the moment. And then we'll worry about who's going to be here next year. Here's the call I wanted to hear. Yeah, go ahead. Here's the call I wanted to hear. Wait a minute. All right. Uh, is this the fan? Yeah. Yeah, hey, guys. How you doing? Love the show. Um... I was watching the game last night. Okay. Uh, I saw Tony Gwynn take his helmet off, his batting helmet. Yeah. Why does his head look like Fred Flintstone's bowling ball? <laughs> you know, it's all bumpy and everything. Because at one point he took that helmet off and his head looked like it had been a, a, an artillery practice field or something. <laughs> So those bumps on his head. I dare someone to call a fan with that question. That'd be a good question because I, I was wondering that. I would laugh my ass off if I heard that. <laughs> the helmet off was like, whoa. Yeah, that was a pretty interesting observation yesterday. Yeah, well, you had to get your observations where you could. Everything else was pretty obvious. Yeah. I just loved it. Yeah. Watch the game and watch all those Padres fans in the stands. Woo! Waving their towels. Yeah, yeah. W wave your towels. Yeah, that's real cute. And they're all, they think they're going to win. They get ahead and they're all, yeah! And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, that one is out of here. And everybody's, ah! <laughs> Tighten their faces right up, huh? Yeah, they need the towels to wipe the tears from their eyes at this point. And then you, you see them in the stands. They're all like in shock. They're just looking around like... But we were just winning the game. Hey, wait a But wait a minute. It was, it was just we were ahead. And we're supposed to win. What? What happened? <laughs> so that one woman, the older woman, with the big ball with the rag hanging out of it, yeah. and she presses it against her head. Yeah. But I thought it was working. We were ahead for. Oh my God, we lost. Yeah, the Padres fans are pretty pathetic, aren't oh, they? Just, just accept the fact that you're going to just get swept and bludgeoned and beaten by what is probably the best team baseball's ever seen. Ever. That's it. Yeah. You know, it, don't feel bad about it. I mean, people have been beat by uh, a lot worse teams. And Joe DiMaggio, hang in there. Don't die on us before they oh. uh, before they win the World Series. Jolt and Joe, they've had to install a sump pump in his lungs at this point. Well, he had pneumonia. Yeah, and they're, they're getting the fluid out of his lungs. That's very scary for a guy in his 80s. Yeah, I mean, that age. So, Joey, hang in there, please. We need you. Yeah, you don't want him dying during the game. No, of course not. You know, afterwards, it'll be like a big thing if he does, you know, pass on. Be like, well, Jolt and Joe had to hang in there and see the Yankees win another World Series. Those old sports casters. There you go. Well, you know what I'm happy about watching the World Series on TV? Mm. That we don't have to listen to Bob Costas. Yeah, that's a good I'm good actually picture. enjoying the broadcast. Yeah. He is so freaking over the top. <laughs> Isn't he? Yeah, he gets profound is what happens. He, Way too He puts profound. too much insight into plays that are pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. You just watch him. I like watching the game. All right, very that's good. It.
Very good. How was my grammar this first break? Pretty good? I wasn't paying attention, but we could uh, check. Okay. We'll uh, review the tapes. All right. And we'll see if you've made any uh, grammatical errors. A lot of people lately have told me that I have a <laughs> grammar problem, so I'm trying to concentrate on my words. I think the word was horrendous. Horrendous was, That's the woman used was used. Yesterday. Thank you. Appreciate it. Really helps my self-esteem. Thanks. No, really. It's great. <laughs> uh, fax line here. 212-957-WNEW. Phone line. We don't need to give that out. The phones are ringing like crazy. And we got the instant feedback for you. Yes, we do. WNEW.com. Click on our pictures and uh, instantly emails here in the studio. I should have said we got the instant feedback for you, not for oh, you. For you. Don't even get hung up on it. Okay, on the way, the latest from REM and the Rolling Stones next. It's Opie and Anthony. I know a lot of faithful listeners are still listening right now, so I got a special little treat for you guys. Okay? If they stuck it out through the commercial. They definitely stuck it out, and now I'm going to give you a little treat. When you hear U2 is even better than the real thing, be the 10th caller at 212-757-1027. You're going to win tickets to see REM tonight. Oh. How cool is that, huh? One zero two seven W N E W, The Rock of New York. <laughs> It's Opie and Anthony. 212-757-1027 if you got something for the show. Hi, NEW. Are you guys sick of listening to sports at all? I mean, just, <laughs> just, just, not that. Now, listen, did you watch a Jet game? Yeah. They, they come up with that ridiculous goddamn statistic that, let me see, no team that has lost to the Jets during the regular season has ever won the Super Bowl. Well, <laughs> do, do, do I really need to do I really need to hear that? How about last night's game? There was a moth on the pitcher's cap. I was waiting to, this just in, this just in. No team with a moth on their cap has ever won a World Series. <laughs> You're absolutely uh, right, man. So I can't stand it. I can't, I can't take colors. it anymore. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It really this is, is the year of the useless instrument. I want to, you know, I'm cursing the computer because that's what that's they, they just, you know, they type it in. Oh, let's see what needless stuff we can say. You know, you have to go back to 1945 to find a pitcher in a winning team of the World Series that actually tied his shoes in a double knot. <laughs> this could you know. shake up baseball as we know it. Do they think that People are, are, are sitting in the homes going, wow, well, that's, how, that's interesting. How about this? I'm watching the World Series, and they're showing everyone's hot zone. With the, yeah, the hot uh, zone. The, yeah, I'd like to see them put it on his crotch, you know? Wouldn't that be, <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be just a terrific f*** up if they have a hot zone right on the guy's f***ing crotch? And what's with all the sound effects they got to do when they uh, put stats on the screen on Fox? Like, all of a sudden, it's like, all right, let's bring up his stats. Shoot. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> 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 like sounds are coming out of it because they're trying to be so futuristic. Oh, oh yeah. Well, Flashing I'll tell you, lights. There's, there's, uh, there's one good new thing. There's one good new on ESPN. They have the, actually have the first down line drawn across the field, so you can actually see when the teams get the first down. Have you oh, seen that's that pretty yet? handy. <laughs> really, we need that. <laughs> It's, it makes it a little, little uh, uh, all right, never mind. All right, guys, I'll see you later. <laughs> all right, brother. 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York. You too, even better than the real thing. That was the song you had to be listening for to win the REM tickets for tonight. A little uh, treat for you guys that uh, listen to us all the time because we announced it after commercials. For the gang, Anthony. Yes. Uh, and I think for the rest of the show, we're moving on. We're going to be giving away some Lenny Kravitz tickets. Who's the winner on the REM tickets? Let's see here. Brian Scanlon of New Jersey. Congratulations, Brian. Enjoy REM tonight. It's going to be a rocking show. Rock. Well, got an email here from Ken. <laughs> Ken, you're all right, actually. Uh, you guys are funny as balls. I listen every day, and my coworkers think I'm a freak because I sit in my office laughing out loud all by myself. In addition to Opie's grammar problem, because we're working on that today. What about me? No, it's all. It, oh. this is all about me today. But they're going to pound me. The one thing we're going to um, work on today is the, people don't like when I say me and Anthony. Right, that's a big sticking point with people. So today I'm going to try to say Anthony and I. I'm going to try. We'll see if uh, I succeed. But anyway, Ken writes, in addition to Opie's grammar problem, he uses the word actually far too often. <laughs> 
I think I've opened up a can of worms with this grammar problem. Oh, Baraba. He sounds like an effing valley girl, for Christ's sake. While you are working on your grammar, please work on that, too. It's effing annoying. Otherwise, keep up the good work. F the ratings. There are a lot of people pulling for you guys. Rock on, Ken. So, now i got to worry about saying actually too much today. And I can't say me and Anthony. It's like when you learn golf. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of things you have to know, but you can't do them all at once. Uh, correct. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to write my little, my little things down here that I'm going to work on today. Okay. Every day we're going to try to accomplish one or two of these <laughs> things. It all started yesterday because I used the word teach. Oh, man. Teach. That was the word. <laughs> Even my mom called and she was embarrassed for me. Yeah. So no, I right. never liked what I was being teached in school. I know. <laughs> I, obviously, it's taught. So, <sighs> All right. Anything on the instant feedback? Uh, no, actually, I haven't, haven't even popped it up here. Come on, guys. You You're it's working. There. You know, you might have something about the show. It doesn't necessarily have to be anything we're talking about today. It could be something that we discussed a couple weeks ago that finally touched a, touched a nerve in you. Yeah. Just give us your comments. We really enjoy the, the feedback you guys give us. We're yes, trying to we build, do. believe it or not, the people's radio show here. Where uh, you could chime in with your thoughts. And hopefully we won't yell at you back. <laughs> the problem is we're trying to build this people's radio show, but we're uh, turning a lot of people off. We get, an we get annoyed when uh, you tell us what's on your mind. No, nah, I'm, I'm kidding, of course. We love your input. Now, I believe we could take it pretty well here. Yes. So, okay. On the way, we got some Aerosmith, some Foreigner. All right, so Anthony and I want to rock on now. <laughs> <laughs> How did this married woman get in my bed? Obi and Anthony. 1027 N-E-W. 1027 W-N-E-W. The Rock of New York with Patty Smith. Because the night from the Easter CD. <laughs> Sophie, it's Anthony. What? Remember the time that um, I discussed Patty Smith's hygiene? And we got in trouble for that? Her armpits. Yes. You think we've yeah. been here long enough where people can um, deal with that? Well, that was early in our uh, in, career. In our NAW career? Dent here at NAW, yes. Well, obviously, if you have the Easter Sea Day, Patty Smith's on the front cover. Mm -hmm. And she has hairy armpits. And I commented that I personally don't like my women with hairy armpits. And, and the women came out of the woodwork. How dare you tell... You know what you like in a woman. Judging women by their the hair under their armpits. Who are you to say what a woman should wear and how? And yeah, it was kind of ugly. I mean, everyone out there can make believe that they actually fall in love with someone because of their personality. You <laughs> fall in love with someone first by by what you see, and then you hope you ha that they have a personality to match. Well, I think you're attracted you're, to somebody. All right, first. all right, I shouldn't say fall in love, but you're attracted to someone by their looks first, and then you hope they have a brain and some intelligence to them, or or some common interests. Right. But these people out there who think you know that <laughs> that they're above all this, and they actually, you know, are attracted to someone's mind first. But there are guys that like hairy armpits. Yes, And are attracted course. to that. Of course. You're I, just speaking personally. I, one, don't like that look. Oh, yeah. I agree. And I just beg the women uh, not to do that. I don't like that either. Because I don't want that style coming back. That's m what I don't want to see, personally. That's uh -huh. all. That's all. Point taken. Okay. <laughs> we got some Lenny Kravitz tickets we're going to give away today. He's playing Saturday night at Roseland. When you hear George Thorogood's Bad to the Bone, be the 10th caller at 212-757-1027. So we've been discussing the Yankees. They're going to pretty much win the World Series tonight. I think we all know that by now. Yeah, that's a given. Looks like uh, we'll have a parade Friday. Just serves those Padres. They paint their field. Did you see that? Their they field was so bashed up and beat up from the football teams that uh, they had to paint it. Paint it green. They put pretty little trees in the outfield. And then they had the nerve to uh, make fun of our stadium. Yeah. Who are you kidding? And the, the field had uh, seams where they tried to patch the grass together. That if a ball got in there, forget about it. Yes. It would take some kind of wacky Jupiter hop. Well, George Steinbrenner wasn't happy. He was on the field yesterday. He was ticked off. Doesn't matter. No, not at all. They can play on your crappy field and beat you. But what I want to ask you, Anthony, after the game, did you watch Letterman? No. I oh. missed Letterman. You missed one of the best things ever. What did he do? 
Well, he did this whole um, bit on uh, state fairs. Mm -hmm. And you know how at state fairs someone grows the, the largest pumpkin and the largest gourds and the hog calling champion. Mm -hmm. I've but, seen that. Well, he had all those people come out one by one, kind of like in the, you know, uh, the stupid uh, pet trick. Right. You know, format. So they show the huge um, pumpkin that weighed like 600 pounds. That was cute. Then a guy came out with some gourds that were extra large. And then yeah, the, I've seen those. Then the hog calling uh, lady comes out. Then they bring out, uh, was it Mr. Blue? Yeah, I don't either. But uh, th basically, they brought out a pig. Right. That weighed close to a thousand pounds. That came up to your chest. Really? Probably. They said like the largest pig in the world, basically. And it's gonna, it's gonna gain another four or five hundred pounds. Wow. So it's on stage. Big it's, pig. It's a big pig. It was Mr. Blue or something like that. Anyway, big blue. Big blue. Big blue. Big blue. Okay. So he's on stage and he's eating. All of a sudden, he turns to face the crowd. He had kahunas. <laughs> <laughs> like the big red kickballs from Jim ah. Glass. <laughs> Did anyone else see this? I couldn't breathe that home. I was laughing so hard. What, his sack? His sack was huger the, than, than the big red kickballs from Jim <laughs> Class. <laughs> and he's moving around the stage and they're just swaying and stuff. And Letterman finally said, uh, you know, I, I think you might have an endorsement there with Jockey Shorts. <laughs> ah, they showed Big Pig Sack on it was, Letterman? It was one of the funniest things I've ever seen on TV because it was just so ridiculously ah, huge. <laughs> That's disgusting. And the crowd is just laughing and laughing and just waiting for uh, Letterman's line. And he finally got one at the end there. And then I tuned in Jay Leno. And he's doing more Clinton jokes. Oh, isn't that done? Totally done. That, until they release some kind of story that Clinton had sex with Boy Scouts, mm -hmm. I think it's pretty much over. Yeah. You know? I think all the news is, is done. But every night, uh, he's got to do at least one or two Clinton jokes. Yeah. He will not let it die, which is pretty pathetic. No. I, and it, it amazes me that Jay Leno actually beats Letterman in the ratings. I don't understand that. With Pig uh, Sack hanging down? I'm sure uh, <laughs> it was... Letterman will be number one in no time again. If I could show you this video, Ant, you wouldn't be able to breathe. You'd be laughing so hard. So. It'll look like when you used to chew up like three packs of Hubba Bubba <laughs> and then pull it out of your mouth and let it just hang there. <laughs> Is that what it looked like? Pretty much. Pig chewed up Hubba Bubba. It, the pig must sit on him every time he, he lays down or sits down. Five big buddies in your mouth. <laughs> they can pull it out and go, bleh, bleh. Just hanging down like that. Pretty much. So there Great. You know, Sorry I, I missed it. I, I thought I would share that with you today. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, man. Maybe I could catch a video clip or something. On the way, we got that new band Eve 6 and coming back with some Tom Petty next. George, this bronze husband wants to kill me. Why did I ever get rid of that 19-year-old with the huge cans? And... To w. 1027 WNEW, the rock of New York. That's the band Eve 6 and Inside Out. It's Opie and Anthony having a fine program thus far. Yes. Thus far is the word to use there, right, Anthony? You could use that word, sure. I was going to use so far, but I think thus far sounds more intelligent. 212-757-1027 <laughs> if you got something for the shoe. Fax line is 212-957-WNEW. Hi, what's up? Oh, hi. This is Tim from Brooklyn. I was just listening to the guys on the radio goofing about Patty Smith. Yeah. When you guys first came on the air, I don't know if it's one of the DJs, he was talking to one of the guys who was goofing on the other guy for dating a girl with a hairy back. Yeah. Okay, I just want to... <laughs> that's all I want to say. Well, wait a minute, because that was me. Oh, okay. Do you want to date her? No, well, what happened was... I, wait, 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 wait. I'm getting a bad rap about no, this. No, no, you're not. I, I lost my virginity to a girl that had, uh, like, a mane growing down her but back. But she was okay. <laughs> <laughs> See what you started, you idiot? Uh, I remember that. Opie's uh, telling everybody that he had sex with a girl that had a hairy back. Well, I remember the story from when you guys first came on. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. He's worried wait, about wait, girls wait, wait, with wait, hairy armpits. Oh, uh, well, no, I've been with you guys since you came on. I've been with Daddy W a long time, but I like you guys. Well, let me. can I explain myself? Go ahead. Go I didn't ahead. purposely Don't search out a girl that had a, uh, a mane growing down her back. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. Uh, am I, be, am I, be sorry I lost I my virginity to this girl, but I didn't realize she had a, uh, a hairy mane on her back until I turned her over. Okay. 
<laughs> what are you going to do at that point? He's worried about armpits? I don't know. Uh, I live in Brooklyn. There's a lot of hairy women. Italian women, no less. He told the he told the girl, "Don't be shy. Take that black sweater off." <laughs> and she said, "I'm not wearing a black sweater." Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. So long. No, really. Thanks. I appreciate you bringing that up. To me. Okay. Goodbye. It's really good. Cuddle with me. Cuddle with me, uh, Opie. Okay. You guys are good. <laughs> goodbye. Great. Thanks, Ed. I want to have a spelling bee. What? A spelling bee? Oh, now you got to get on me? Yeah, I'm a, a very lousy speller. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> you know? I, I feel like having a spelling bee. <laughs> Do I get to study? Um, yes, you could study. Oh, we'll get into that another day, I guess. Yeah, my spelling is uh, pretty Horrendous. Bad. Sorry. Remember how that lady used the word horrendous when she was... Uh, Describing my grammar yesterday, oh. Anthony's spelling is horrendous. I think having a problem with grammar is a little worse than having a problem with spelling, Opie. Well, uh, I guess. At least I could use the old spell check on the computer when I send emails. Yeah, I don't have a grammar tr check. No. Right. <laughs> All right. Stay tuned. On the way, tragically hip and George Thur. <laughs> 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York. Tragically Hip. That's Poets from the Phantom Power CD and Lonesome George Thorogood before that. That's a song you had to be listening for to win the Lenny Kravitz tickets. And John Schaefer of New York, New York, has got a pair of tickets to see Lenny this Saturday at Roseland. Congratulations, John. Next hour, you got to be listening for Foghat Slow Ride. When you hear that, be the 10th caller at 212-757-1027. And you, too, will win a pair of tickets to see Lenny Kravitz. All right? Very good. Hey, we got Mark Olin coming in today. I'm pretty excited about this. I've been thumbing through Maxim Magazine. He's the editor-in-chief of yes, Maxim Magazine. Should be here momentarily. Last time he, he was on the show. Uh, we had a lot of fun with him. Mm -hmm. And we're not putting him on just because he's the editor-in-chief of Maxim. We're putting him on because the guy's completely out of his gourd. <laughs> right? He is a, a fun sort. He's I'll a, tell you that much. He's a trip. There's a lot of creative energy that comes from this guy's head, and we uh, we like to tap into it every once in a while and, and share it with you guys. So Jennifer Esposito on the cover, huh? Yeah, she's pretty hot. Yeah, she looks pretty good in these little pictures. Every issue they have a little centerfold, pretty yeah. much. And uh, well, it's the guy magazine: sex, sports, beer, gadgets, clothes, and fitness. Yes. You know. Also, you know who's going to be calling in today? Oh, Dice. <laughs> Dice. <laughs> yeah. What does he want? I'm a little confused because usually Dice sits out in that lobby mm -hmm. when we're on the air, and he busts in from time to time. Yeah. With his wisdom. <laughs> But uh, today he's too busy to be here. I think busy? He, I think he actually has something going on that he'll tell us all about. And that's why he's calling in today instead of walking in from the lobby. Okay. He usually just wait. sits out there waiting for us to call him in. Can't wait to hear it. Yeah, it should be exciting. Yeah. And if you got something for the show, 212-757-1027. Hi, NEW. Hey, what's happening, guys? How are you? All right. Uh, just a little uh, information, you know, regarding the Patty Smith hair incident. Yes. Uh, I had a blind date with a girl. About two months ago, completely gorgeous, drop dead, could have been a model. We go out, I buy her dinner, take her out for a couple of drinks, coerce her to come back to my apartment, start fooling around, you know, I get the pants down. <laughs> she had a bush that went from one side to the next. <laughs> it's like a pair of hip waders she had on, I'm telling you. Like she could have went in the water and nothing would have got wet. You know what we call that, don't you? Run away. No, the 70s Earth Mama muff. <laughs> oh, my God. Let me tell you. Did it look like she was making Jiffy Pop popcorn in her underpants? Oh, it was disgusting. <laughs> Did it look like she had Link from the Mod Squad's head in a leg lock? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it looked like she had uh, Telly Savalas' hairpiece on before he figured he might as well just go bald. <laughs> or he had a little William Shatner down there. But let me tell you, she was drop-dead gorgeous. Well, I couldn't believe it. Well, that's coming back, I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah, please, if that's coming back, I don't know what I'm doing. Because, <laughs> let me say, the hair under the arms and the hair on the body, you guys are right. It just doesn't do it for me. What is this? Get this out of here. Well, you know, but uh, the problem is if we discuss this on the air, then you get women out there that are mad at us for discussing our likes and dislikes. Isn't it unbelievable? Don't, doesn't I think everybody have likes and dislikes about men, right? Exactly. And doesn't everybody, aren't everybody entitled to an opinion? which doesn't have to be the same as everyone else's. 
Well, you would think that, but you, you would. In this politically correct world we live in, you're not allowed to have an opinion. You know anymore. what it is? Is the women that are calling you up? They're the ones with the big bushes. Well, actually, and the hairy underarms. Actually, let's play fair today. We'll have a few women call up and uh, tell us what they don't like about guys. Yeah, have them berate us. All right, man. All right, guys. Thanks Th a lot. Thank you. 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York with Steve Miller. It's uh, Opie and Anthony. On the way, we're going to be talking to Andrew Dice Clay. Oh, yeah. Do we even need to tease the, the fact that we're going to be talking to him, Anthony? Oh, no, no. He's a huge star. I think everybody knows who he is. Well, actually, if, if you know the history of Dice with our show, he's been hanging out in the lobby since we started here at NEW four months ago because he really doesn't have a life. And every once in a while, he barges into the, the studio, you know, to try to get some airtime, to try to get his popularity back. Get his plugs in. We noticed that he wasn't uh, around the last couple of days, and we found out why, because he's going to be on Dharma and Greg tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that hot TV show. Wow, yeah. that's. Have that's... you ever watched Dharma and Greg? I think I watched the first episode. And that was it? That was pretty much it. Yeah, so. I did it. So Dice wants to plug his little appearance tonight on TV. I read in the TV Guide, yeah, Dice is uh, doing a cameo on it, and he's playing himself. Oh, that's, There's a stretch. That's going to be real cute. Which dice is it going to be if he's playing himself? Is it the, the angry dice mm -hmm. that everybody remembers when he used to maybe be funny in 1986? Or is it uh, the dice from the TV show where he was the postal employee mm -hmm. and he had the little cute kids coming up to him and, you know, he'd, he'd have a cute little banter with them? Or is it the dice from the failed, uh, his other failed show, Hits? Hits. Oof. Oof. Well, we'll talk to Dice and we'll find out all about it. Sure. All right. What do you think of uh, Dice, Mark? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we got Mark Golan in the studio, the editor-in-chief of Maxim Magazine. Yeah, yeah. That's Dharma and Greg Brady, isn't it, the show? <laughs> yeah, that might be interesting. That, that would be a lot of fun to see. Like that. Yes. Do, do, do. Yeah, so. Well, you were so excited last time we had you on the air, we decided to have you back. But it won't work a second time, will it? You, you don't think so? We could give it a whirl. We could give it a whirl. We'll take try. a swing at it. We'll if try. nothing else, we'll thumb through Maxim. There we see go. What, uh, you kind of, through it. See what kind of hijinks you've been up to this, for the past month. This time I don't have to beg for beer. I brought my own. I noticed that because <laughs> the listeners last time let you down. They uh, didn't bring you beer until, until 7 o'clock. Yeah. So. We expect you to be extra funny today because you do have your beer. Oh, super <laughs> funny. <laughs> so I haven't even been able to thumb uh, through the latest issue of Maxim Magazine. What can I expect from this month's issue, Mark? Uh, you know, lots of stuff. Same old thing. Yeah. Different things. Is there a theme this month? There's no theme this month. It's uh, it's 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 uh, it's sort of our general kind of look at the world in general. We've got. Uh, I like that. We've got uh, a little report on Russia, where they're losing atomic bombs and <laughs> strip clubs and. Wait, strip clubs in Russia? Oh, there's this great one. This is the best. There's this club. It's called the Hungry Duck. And uh, what they do is they let a whole bunch of women in early, and they have male strippers that whip these women into an orgiastic frenzy. And uh, I'm really proud of that phrase, orgiastic frenzy. Is that a word? And, uh, and then when they're really hot, they let guys in. The women pay like two rubles to get in. The guys pay 30 bucks. By the time Whoa. the guys get in, the women are ripping their clothes off. It's wow, amazing. how about that? And uh, let's see what else. That's what's going on over there in uh, uh, Russia. Let's see, there's Red Square, St. Basil Cathedral, all that kind of crap. But there's also this restaurant where um, it's this huge restaurant. You sit at tables, and in the middle of the restaurant, there's this glass-encased farm with an old lady tending goats. So you just you sit there and you eat dinner and watch her <laughs> clean up goat crap. Come on. I'm serious. They've really I'm lost serious. any sense of, of reality it, over there. It, it's in print. It means it's true. In the former Soviet Union. They're uh, missing atomic bombs? Yeah. about uh, They've uh, misplaced about 100 suitcase-sized atomic bombs over the last <laughs> few years. Oh, that's just lovely to hear. Th this is the best one. The, uh, the Russian army down south, they, took, you know, they sent all their uniforms out to be cleaned. They didn't have money to pay for the cleaning services. So they have no uniforms. <laughs> the, the laundry is like, no, we're not returning them. This is this is so what a scary. Mess. And then Boris Yeltsin's all drunk and stuff all over He's the place. He's drop right, dead. Right. We have started the Boris Yeltsin, uh, you know, death watch. Yeah. 
I think he's going to be out by uh, the end of the year. You need, I saw you need him a, wavering. You need a big clock in here or something. You, you know, want like a clock? Vodka bottles instead of numbers. <laughs> <laughs> For Boris, sure. For Boris. Boris death clock. <laughs> what else could you tell us about Russia that's in the magazine this month? Let's see. Let's just thumb to it. Well, later on, I want to talk about if men really ruled the world, uh, too. We'll get to that. That's uh, my personal favorite my from this God, issue. God, this is just right on the money. All right. Well, we're just getting warmed up. How's that? Yeah. Mark's hanging with us today. If you got something, 212-757. 1027. <laughs> what are you laughing at, eh? Just one quick instance of if, if men really rule the world. I love the movies, how movies would change. Before the bridges of Madison County. Yeah. After the F 14s of Madison County. <laughs> <laughs> we talk about that a lot. It's a, it's a touching love story. <laughs> we'll get into chick flicks with you, Mark, in a little uh, while, okay? Absolutely. But up next, we're going to be talking to <laughs> Dice, supposedly live from Hollywood. Stay right there. 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York. Another track from Tracks. That's Bruce Springsteen, Where the Bands Are, the box set comes out November 10th. And we got something really cool for you guys. NEW presents a world premiere Bruce Springsteen box set listening party. That's going to happen next week at the Hard Rock Cafe, October 27th. So next Tuesday. And what you got to do is listen to WNEW to find out how you can be there. Oh, brother. I got to introduce everyone. It's Opie, it's Anthony, and it's our pal Mark Golan from uh, Maxim Magazine, the editor in chief. <laughs> what are you laughing at over there? Somebody sent <laughs> sent a little cute little story about um, the hairy armpit issue that we were talking about earlier. Yes. Uh, on the topic of hairy pits, a drunk and a woman are sitting on opposite ends of the bar. The drunk is ordering drinks as the woman with the hairy pits is waving over the bartender. The drunk says, give me a beer and whatever the ballerina's having. But and says, how do you know she's a ballerina? To which the drunk replies, anyone who could get her leg that high has to be a ballerina. <laughs> oh ah, thanks, Joe, from Bayonne. That's, that's a good one. <laughs> Shades of Oscar Wilde there. <laughs> you you got to yeah. love it. Very nice. That's our listeners. We're proud of them. Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, in a little bit, we're going to discuss if men re really ruled the world with Mark. Uh, from Axon Magazine. There's some really funny stuff in here. We'll get to that. But right now, we got to get to Andrew Dice Clay's on our phone line right now. Oh, joy. Uh, this is the loser line, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> a new feature on the Opie and Anthony show, the loser line. We'll have one loser a week call us. <laughs> All right? But Dice is going to be on a TV show tonight, and he wants to plug his little gig. Oh, great. Can't wait. And usually, he hangs out in our lobby, you know, praying for some airtime. And uh, We were wondering where he's been. Yeah, he's been gone for the last couple of days, but I guess he's been uh, filming a sitcom. Oh, well. Let's, let's talk to the Dice man. Uh, hi, Dice. Hey, is this Jake off and Snapperhead? Yeah, yeah, hey. yeah, yeah. Hey, wait, wait, you in New York trying to get that, that loser radio show going, huh? Well, where are you? I'm in Hollywood, baby. What are you? Hollywood. Wait a minute, what are you doing in Hollywood? I'm starring on an, a, a big sitcom. I'm starring. What, what, Frazier? The Dharma and Dice Man, you never heard of it? Oh, you mean Dharma and Greg? Oh, uh, it's Dharma and Dice Man now. I'm going to be big on this show. Guys, I hate to tell you, but no one watches that show. Listen, Snapperhead. Huh? No one listens to your show. I'm in Hollywood. I'm on a TV show. Wait a second. We seem to be showing that you're calling from Branson, Missouri. Hey, who's that loser, huh? It's Mark. I got to I gotta put up with this. <laughs> now there's three Snapperheads in there. <laughs> Look, the truth of the matter is the Dice Man is back. I'm in Hollywood. I'm making TV shows. Where are you, huh? Hey, Dice, wait a minute. This is Anthony. Uh, you want to hear my impression of you? Yeah, go ahead. Let's hear this. Hey, this is Dice Man. I used to be somebody, but now I can't even sell out a closet. Oh! Oh, yeah, that's real good, huh? Oh, that sounds fantastic. Just like me. What an ass. So, Dice, when are you going to be back so you can get us our coffee after your cute little TV appearance? Hey, that's real funny, huh? You ought to be a comedian. <laughs> Say what you want. I'm in Hollywood. I'm making TV shows. Where are you, huh? Uh... Where are you, huh? <laughs> well, I'll tell you where you are. Nowheres. This is nowheres, all of you. I'm back. The Dice Man's back. I got the leather jacket with the, the studs on the back says the Dice Man. Are you going to be doing any rhymes tonight on the TV show? I don't need no rhymes no more. Yeah. I'm a big star. Yeah, sure you are. I'm a big star. Yeah, you're a loser. Yeah, on the Weather Channel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, real funny. Keep it up there, Snapad. You're not calling from huh? Hollywood. You're calling from Allentown. Well, you got caller ID. <laughs> yeah, well, something screwed up with the connection. Hey, Dice, wasn't Jimmy Walker available for your part on this show? We need you back here to make us coffee. 
It's no more getting you anything. I'm a big star now. Who's that? That, 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 that Jenna Elfhead that's doing that Dom and Greg show? She came up to me. She goes, oh, Dice, I need you for my show. My ratings are real bad. I said, honey, I'll come on your show. You just got to bend over and let me get buggy. <laughs> You're a mess. That's how the Dice Man makes it, huh? Yeah, that's real funny stuff, Dice. Can't hey, wait can to I see it tonight. Show? Yeah, go ahead. And I'm going to be at uh, Laugh Till You Crap Your Pants, coincidentally enough, in Allentown, Pennsylvania. All right. All right, loser. Hey, Anthony wants to say goodbye to you. Yeah, I'll say goodbye to you in a rhyme. Jack, be nimble. Jack, be quick. I ain't been funny since 86. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, sounds just like me, loser. Goodbye. I'm in Hollywood. <laughs> goodbye. You're nowhere. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> oh. <laughs> God, what a loser. <laughs> <laughs> got a cameo role as himself. Yes. We got to get the clip of it. We'll play it tomorrow and abuse him. Oh, we definitely will. Everyone's got to watch the show tonight. <laughs> 1027 WNEW. 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York. Stone Temple Pilots and Plush. Sophie, it's Anthony. And it's our pal Mark Golan from Maxim Magazine, the editor in chief. And we're checking out the latest issue of Maxim Magazine. There's some great stuff in this issue. Every month, there's some great stuff, though. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. I'm, I'm looking at the section, if men really ruled the world, Anthony. Well, we like to think we do, right? Yeah, well, it's true. And in fact, I'm already getting a little bit of crap about this. It's like, Mark, we do rule the world. And I realized, <laughs> the moment I realized when we didn't was I was in the supermarket. And the first aisle in every supermarket is always produce, vegetables. I'm thinking, hey, if we ruled the world... It would be the pork on a stick and cheese doodle aisle, <laughs> right? But no, it's vegetables. That's always vegetables. <laughs> that's, right. so that's, that's when I realized my, my whole world was falling apart there. It's like, we don't rule the world. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> There's some very funny ones in here, Mark. Yeah, so, so we basically got together and decided, okay, well, if we really did rule the world, if we just completely ignored the wisdom of our moms, our girlfriends, our wives, nuns, what would the world be like? And uh, here are a couple of the things that we came up with. Uh, in sex and relationships, number one, nodding and looking at your watch would be deemed an acceptable response to a, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, speaking solely in Clint Eastwood quotes would count as opening up. <laughs> <laughs> this one I really love. When your girlfriend really needed to talk to you during the game, she'd appear in a little box in the corner of the screen during a timeout. <laughs> oh, now you get it. And, and there'd also be one of those people there, like, doing the deaf sign language. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what else? Oh, this one's good, too. When women climaxed, they'd make a noise like a pinball machine. You know that when you win a free game? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, what is that, that knock. <laughs> Is that the most satisfying sound in the world, or what? <laughs> when you were just rolling and that falls on, bing, ding, ding, bing, ding, 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 yep. bing, ding, 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 and all of a sudden, yep. oh yeah! And you know everybody in the bowling alley's looking at you. Free ball, <laughs> yes, free game. Uh, and then, oh, this one's good too. Breaking up would be a lot easier. A smack on the ass and a nice hustle. You'll get them next time. Would pretty much do it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's sex and relationship. Then at work, the things that would be different there at any time and for any reason, you'd be allowed to build a campfire in your office. Yeah. That <laughs> That'll happen. Ties would still be required, but they'd be made of beef jerky. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what I love, too. At the end of the workday, a whistle would sound, and you'd jump out your window and slide down the tail of a brontosaurus and right into your car like Fred <laughs> <laughs> This is all if men really rule the world. I like uh, how movies would change. Uh, that's good, too, yeah. The English patient would become the French maid. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> like the horse whisperer would be the horse juggler. With a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Anything with a gun, I, I figured out is acceptable. Yes, no, that's pretty, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and as far as sports goes, uh, the only show opposite Monday Night Football would be Monday Night Football from a different camera angle. Yeah. Oh. My favorite probably in the entire thing is uh, men would take control of women's magazines. And we did this thing called Maxim Wazelle. <laughs> and here's like a couple of the cover lines. Okay. Threesomes. Are you missing the boat? <laughs> he lies. He cheats. What are you doing wrong? <laughs> and is he getting enough time away from you? <laughs>
<laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, the ones from Cosmo are completely ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, how to find your G spot and all that fun stuff. Uh, so here's yeah. something I think Obi could uh, relate to. Uh oh, where are you going? No, this is j elevator closed door buttons would be responsive to the point of injury. You know how you always Obi hates getting anybody else in the elevator. Yeah, and and he'll sit there and hit the closed door button twenty times, and you're waiting for it to close. It's not a closed door button. It's something to do while the door closes on its own. Actually, a, a guillotine button would be great. Like for those people that like reach their arm in. Like you're, you're almost there. You're almost gliding up, and some jackass reaches his arm in there. Just, <laughs> that would be very good. Oh, I like this one too. All right. You could murder any man who draws a distinction between heat and humidity. <laughs> You are messed up, Mark. Hey, come on. Yeah, it's, it's not that it's hot. It's just so close, you know? It's so <laughs> muggy. <laughs> Do you feel damp? <laughs> I feel damp. <laughs> damp. I feel a little moist. <laughs> All right, more with Mark and Opie and Anthony. If you got something to add, 212-757-1027. On the way, we got some holes. Stay there. Elaine, my new girlfriend gave me a hand job, and her wedding ring gave me a rash. One zero two seven W N E W, the Rock of New York, with Hole, that celebrity skin, and Fog Hat. Before that, that's a song you had to be listening for to win the tickets to see Lenny Kravitz this weekend at Roseland. And Sherry from New Jersey was paying attention, and she has a pair of t tickets. Congratulations, Sherry. Ah. Well, yeah, a little Freud Freudian slip there. Well, she has a pair of tickets. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, she has that too. Okay, it's Sophie, it's Anthony, and it's our pal Mark Golan from uh, Maxim Magazine hanging with us once again today. And we're going through the latest issue of Maxim Magazine, and there's a very, very funny section here. You're sick. Uh, kids read the darndest things, Mark. What's that all about? Well, it's uh, you know so many of uh, the classic children's books. We were raised on. We were written so long ago that we figured it was time to update them a little bit. And, uh, this is what he does. <laughs> this is what he does for a living. This is what we do all day long. Uh, I thought our jobs were fun, and yeah, I think uh, he has a better job than what, us. Yeah, what can we take that's clean and pure and twist it and throw mud <laughs> on it? it. <laughs> and uh, this time it was children's books. So um, here's a few of the ones that we uh, think should be printed now. Okay. Daddy drinks because you cry. <laughs> All dogs go to hell. <laughs> By Curious George. Very good. I like that one. Uh, I like this one. What is that dog doing to that other dog? <laughs> Some kittens can fly. <laughs> and then we start... It, it goes down from there. Oh, it, great. it burns when I pee, Charlie Brown. <laughs> Why grandma's not moving. <laughs> Don't stop feeding the fish. <laughs> Oh, Hell, where little kids go who don't brush their teeth. Yes. <laughs> and how the Grinch knocked over the 7-Eleven. Charlie and the Fudge, uh, Colonel. Now <laughs> you've gone too far. I was come trying on. to be tasteful here and skip over that yeah, but for come public on. consumption. Charlie and the Fudge, Colonel. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even get that. <laughs> what, do you, what do you even mean by that? Oh, man. All right, Mark. Very good. You should see the illustrations. Yeah. Well, Mark off, off mic was discussing something he wants to do in a future episode, uh, future uh, magazine. The top 100 albums. Oh, yeah. Because our listeners could help you out with that, actually. Well, no. You know what? Actually, what I want the listeners to help me out with is we're going to be working on this piece called 100 Stupid Things to Do When You're Bored. And uh, mm. we, we just started working on it and some of the things that we've come up with this is one that i've actually tried i, I, I keep a book of these actually <laughs> <laughs> and uh the one that i really love is uh you go to a burger king and you go up to the counter and you ask directions to another burger king <laughs> and they'll take like 15 minutes trying to explain to you that they all have the same food <laughs> and you keep going i know i just want a different one <laughs> and they lose their minds <laughs> or another one is uh you know, when you're sitting in a room in a meeting, this is good to do at work, and somebody's talking to you, you put your finger to your lips, and then you write on a piece of paper, and you hold it up, and it says, I think the room is bugged. <laughs> <laughs> do you want our listeners to help you out with this? Absolutely. I want things to do when you're bored. Somebody, uh, 
<laughs> somebody sent me one. Uh, basically, you go down to the street and you invite people to come up to your apartment to see your butter carving of the Virgin Mary. <laughs> oh, wow. And then you bring them up, and then when they see this plate of just melted butter, you start whimpering and you start, like, praying to the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> So how many times a week do you do acid, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> All right, our listeners so, can help you out. Yeah, though. please. You call in. Things you, you do when you're bored. Or you could fax them to us, 212-957-WNEW. Might be in a future issue of Maxim Magazine. That would be very cool. Yep, we'll make you famous. All right, more with Mark in a bit. Stay there. Hey, Anthony, we need to take a minute and talk about MindSpring. Internet access. A very cool internet access. Mm -hmm. They got uh, fast, reliable 56K connections. How cool is that when you're tooling around the internet, Anthony? Well, you need that. You know me, Opie. I'm a, a computer hound. And if I connected anything less than 56, what do I do? Uh, you throw your computer out I the window? I throw it against the wall and start stepping on it. You're pretty much buying computers every week because you don't have that connection. Well, you know, when you're downloading the good stuff off the internet, video. You need something fast. You get 26 and stuff, and you're sitting there waiting and waiting. And MindSpring guarantees the fast, reliable 56K connections. Also, they got free customer support 24 hours a day, seven days a week, toll free. Well, so pretty much it's easy to get them on the line when you're having a problem with your uh, Internet connection. Here's me with my old uh, Internet access company. Yeah. Uh, hello? Yeah, um, I need help. Please hold. <laughs> okay, now, if we can all just sit here and wait until 8 o'clock, I could do the rest of this. Yeah, exactly. Uh, another cool thing about MindSpring, you can call them toll-free at 1-888-MSPRING and tell them that Opie and Anthony sent you, and MindSpring will waive the $25 startup fee and give you the first 30 days of service free from the day you sign up. It's that easy. Use that 25 bucks to... Uh Get to the uh, porno sites. There you go. 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York, Matchbox 20, and Push. It's Opie and Anthony and Mark Olin from Maxim Magazine hanging with us once again today. Also, got to remind you, later on this hour, we're going to play Thin Lizzie's The Boys Are Back in Town. When we do, be the 10th caller at 212 757 1027 to pick up some Lenny Kravitz tickets for the show at Roseland this Saturday night, okay? And, I, and Mark is uh, encouraging our listeners to get involved here because they could possibly be in a future issue of Maxim Magazine. That's right. Uh, things, stupid things to do when you're bored. And we got a fax here. A guy writes, grab a friend and a roll of quarters, go down to the local laundromat, and take turns getting in the dryer and going for dryer rides. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Remember to keep the heat off. Air dry only. <laughs> this might be a future issue. You never know. If you want to add to the list, you can fax us. 212-957-WNEW. Hi, NEW. I got an idea of something to do on your board. Yes. It's also a time saver for everybody else. Okay. How handy. You go down to the bank and you fill in your account number and all the blank deposit slips. <laughs> <laughs> now you're thinking. Hey, it saves time for everyone. Very good. <laughs> Excellent. Right. Thank you, man. You're welcome. I think we're on to something here, Mark. Huh? Wait a second. The last time I was here, did we talk about the uh, the porn booth thing? The porn, <laughs> the porn booth. booth. I'm not the, sure. The, the, uh, this is one that we used to do when we were really bored. Was you go down to... Um, a porn shop, you know, with the booths for the movies. And uh, you bring a jar of mayonnaise. Oh, yeah, we did. Okay. Oh. Can we talk about it? Do it again, though. We, we're, uh, getting, we're, we're gaining new listeners every day. Go ahead. Uh, you know, you take one of those, like, basting things with you, and uh, you know, the, that you slather on barbecue sauce. And uh, you go inside and you slather it on <laughs> the inside doorknob and then you leave. And then you just stand there and wait and some poor schmuck walks in there. He puts his quarters in and so on. Then he tries to leave. He puts his hand on the doorknob. You hear like a little, eh. <laughs> and, then, and then there's like five minutes of silence. And then you hear this like, eh. Hello? <laughs> Can somebody let me out? <laughs> Very nice. Someone 20 booths, the door. you got a lot of guys doing it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, too funny. <laughs> All right, what else were we going to discuss here? There's uh, so much. There's so much. And well, there was the uh, third grade. We started getting misty-eyed and nostalgic, you know, while the music was playing, right? Yeah. And, what were you uh, saying? Fun? Wait, no, wait, wait. <laughs> what were you saying about third grade, though? Because oh. <laughs> I remember doing this, actually. All right. Well, everybody's going to have to pony up one if I tell this one. So Okay. Uh, this is, uh, you're on the school bus, and you decide you're going to spit on somebody. <laughs> but... <laughs> just cause. Other things, just because. Just yeah. because. And it being third grade, you have to go for the gusto. <laughs> so uh, we used to have like this 25-minute school bus ride, and you just sit there in the back and you start like saving up spit. 
you know, minute after minute, and it'd be collecting, and your <laughs> cheeks would start bulging out. You'd be like, you'd be a saliva gerbil, basically. <laughs> you know, you have a little bit that you, you're allowing yourself to swallow, but you keep the rest of it. And uh, by the end of like 20, 25 minutes, you're practically throwing up. And then you get off the bus and you walk up to the person <laughs> and you, you try and go, hey, but it comes out like, <laughs> and, then, and they turn around and you get up really close and just dump it all on them. <laughs> Stupid things you did in third grade. Mine actually uh, uh, involves saliva. Also, it was the what a coincidence. Yeah, it was. It, well, it's because it's third grade. That's you most so, of. You have so few things at your disposal. Yeah, exactly. You, you're not, not an adult. You, what do you, you don't have money. You don't have any possessions. You have you and your spit. Yeah, if you can't make it yourself, forget it. That's it. You're self-contained. <laughs> but when you used to pin somebody down, and especially right after chocolate milk, and you'd go, hey. And get this line of spit going out of your mouth down, just about touching the nose, and then <laughs> suck it back up again. <laughs> Wait a don't don't shake me. Don't shake it out. It's gonna fall. <laughs> back up again. <laughs> yeah, the old pit and pendulum. <laughs> yeah. And it would work great after like Nestle's Quick. Uh, oh yeah. Just very viscous. Actually, Anthony, I got a friend, Glenn Notice. He was on David Letterman. He did a trick with his saliva, where he he you know would stand up right, and he would do the saliva thing. He would have to drink orange soda. He would be. <laughs> able to get the spit all the way down to the floor, pick up a piece of popcorn, and suck it all up <laughs> into his mouth. Wow. Like a dragonfly, uh, like a frog catching a dragonfly. Yeah, he, he was on uh, Letterman doing this trick and the old Howard Stern show on Channel 9. A wow. Really good friend of mine. Yeah. <laughs> That's a talent. There's a res you know, it's a resume stuffer. The, the only thing hero still walk the planet. <laughs> yeah, of course. Well, the only thing I did in third grade was like just eat the big white paste for lunch money. But Oh, the paste? Yeah. You know, it tasted good, though. You were the paste eater? Yeah, I was the took, paste eater. It took you eater. a while to work your way out of third grade. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> and then there was the glue, uh, the, the rubber cement boogers you would make. Yeah. You know, you put it on the desk and let it dry a little and roll it up and go, ew, ew, put it by your nose, <laughs> ew, rubber then, cement boogers. And then you would pull it out and wipe it on someone and they'd freak out. See, now you are getting misty. You yeah, told no, me you were going to choke, gonna choke no, up no, a little okay, bit. This one's going to make me break out in tears. <laughs> <laughs> Did anybody ever snort a pixie stick? <laughs> Remember Pixie Stick? Remember those? The grape. The grape. It's like grape. You snort one of those purple haze. It's playing on the inside of your brain. It's unbelievably painful. And you'd like, you'd snort one off, and then you'd just sit there and go, oh, God, ow! And then you'd do it again. I wonder what orange would be like. And it hurts just as much. No, man, you got to crush up the Nico wafers. Yeah, now you're talking. Just to, like, play priest in the schoolyard with that. Uh, Here right. you go, Nico. Oh, a black one. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. <laughs> Very nice. All right, we got more with Mark yeah. on the way. Also some great rock and roll. We got the latest from Dave Matthews and Queen next. Hey, Anthony, I got a song for the uh, San Diego Padres. What? What's that? Another one bites the dust. Oh, oh. Queen. That's insane, wacky, zanerifical, but you're making a, a wacky dedication. <laughs> you're insane. <laughs> 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York. 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York. The latest from the Dave Matthews Band. That's Crush. You're hanging with Opie and Anthony and Mark Golan from Maxim Magazine. We love Maxim Magazine and, and we like Mark. <laughs> Not because you're the editor in chief of Maxim, because you're so bizarre. <laughs> Well, he fits right in here. Oh, you totally fit in with our yeah. show, and we'd like to have him on like once a month uh, because I don't think uh, any of us could handle it more than once a month, you know? <laughs> the nightmare begins again. Yeah, but the listeners are, you're sparking some stuff in the listeners, and we like that. And and the phones are ringing like crazy. I think we should go to a few of them here. Yeah. Hi, Andy W. Hey, how's it going, guys? All right, you and, enjoying uh, the show today? Yeah, I'm, I'm loving it. I love this. <laughs> cool. Hey, we had one called the MFPP. You are the mother proverbial prophylactic. What we used to do is we used to take a condom and we used to put it in a place that was very undesirable but unknown. What a friend of mine did to me was he took this and he put it in my mayonnaise jar in my refrigerator. <laughs> and I had a girl come over and we were going out to the beach and I was making sandwiches and flap right on a piece of bread. <laughs> So what we did to him to get him back was we actually put it in his bowling ball. <laughs> and we were bowling in a championship league, and he came down the alley and dropped the ball halfway down the alley. This thing came out. 
And that's what we used to do for fun as kids. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, he brought up a very pertinent thing, which is escalation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that was it. No, and no one was safe. <laughs> what do you mean you did that as kids? I, I want to do this this weekend. Oh, yeah. well, that, that, was, that was more college stuff, but we used to have a lot of fun with it. Oh, very good. Hey, guys, listen. I love your show. You all be cool, all right? Thank Thanks, you. Man. All right, be good. Take it easy. Bye. Oh, that's funny. That, that's like that thing. Yeah, when we were kids. All right, yesterday. <laughs> yeah, right? Well, no one wants to admit they have the mentality of a kid still. You know, for some reason, society has decided you have to grow up society. and have responsibility, and you're not supposed to have fun anymore after you hit a certain age. Yeah. We say, screw that. It's, it's crushing our creativity. Yeah, I think, Isn't it? I think we should play the condom game all over New York. And Absolutely. People, people start calling in uh, with the most unusual place they left a, a condom. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Why not? <laughs> Let the games begin. Yes, yeah, so let's take another call here. Hi, N.E.W. Yeah, how you doing? Good, what do you got? This Opie and Anthony? Yes. Yeah. Wow, I can't believe I got through. Cool. Hey, uh, I've been listening to you guys for the last couple of weeks. I think you guys are doing a great job. I don't know where they're getting all this other crap that you're, uh, that you're coming in dead last. I, I can't believe that. <laughs> well, we're not even going to worry about that anymore. Uh, I know. We're but, moving uh, forward. I was just driving home, and I heard you guys uh, talking about uh, practical jokes, things to do, what you can do to keep yourself from being bored. Yes. Yeah. I got the ultimate. Okay. Okay. Something uh, me and a couple Army buddies used to do when we used to drive back and forth to different bases. Take a whoopee cushion, and you go into a bathroom in uh, one of the highways. Yeah. And you go into one of the stalls, and you start blowing up the whoopee cushion, and you just start cracking out some wind out of the thing <laughs> while you're grunting and screaming your brains out inside one of them, people will run out of the bathroom <laughs> laughing hysterically. <laughs> and while you're driving, after you leave and you're driving down the highway, you'll still see people with tears in their eyes laughing their brains out <laughs> driving down the highway. That is good. You gotta yell out, oh dear lord. Hey, I, do it like six times, I do it like six times out of the year. It's just feeling like you're, everything's falling down on top of you. Oh, God. You just get in the bathroom and you Go, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> it's absolutely the best thing you can do to cheer God, yourself I up. I swear I'll never eat that again. <laughs> Just get me through this one, please. <laughs> God is my witness. I'll never eat Mexican again. They run out of the bathroom with tears in their eyes. I saw one guy ran out of the bathroom with his pants still down. He couldn't even pull it up. In the bathroom. Anyone in here, run! Save yourself! <laughs> Even better is to bring a little glass of water and just spill it on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. There we go, guys. Bye. Hey, keep, keep up the great you. work. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, everybody in the fire department down here is listening to you. Thank you. All right. Putting, putting on the ceiling. Get it, get it. Wow. <laughs> Start lobbing it out of the, out of the stall. <laughs> You guys still here? Oh, yeah, we are. Yeah, this, really, this is uh, what we call our radio show. It's a mess. Yeah. All right, man. Thank you. All right, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> the listeners are coming up with some funny stuff today, huh? Oh. Didn't do more beef stew. That has got to be the one that would work the best. Oh, wham! And just throw it against the ceiling. All right, there's another game we can start in New York, I guess, huh? <laughs> the fun bathroom game. Why not? Hi, Annie W. I love you guys. Thank you. We love you. Listen, I got a good one for you. Okay. Um... You take a candy bar, we struck a nerve. and you rub it all over your hands. I heard a comedian say this. You rub it all over your hands, yeah. and you put it underneath the stall, bathroom, <laughs> and ask them if they got toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> I am so proud the ladies are coming aboard. Oh, how about this one? Putting hand cream in a... Um, a water gun? Yeah. And going into a porno flick and squirting it behind someone's head in front of you. <laughs> God. I think Pee Wee did that, huh? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I bring my own water gun. Comes <laughs> uh, in a pump dispenser. <laughs> ah. <laughs> All right, thanks for participating. Right, I tell everyone to listen to you guys. We appreciate that. All right, thanks. All right. Bye. As we continue our downward slide. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York, Thin Lizzy, the boys are back in town. It's Opie, it's Anthony, and it's Mark Golan from Maxim Magazine. The November issue will be out uh, any day now, right, Mark? Yep. We barely talked about the magazine. We always digress when you come into our studio, but that's okay. We it's, like, it's fine. We like this.
Who needs rampant commercialism anyway? No, know what I liked from the October issue? You had a whole um, article on like uh, trick or treating and stuff. Oh yeah, when I you, could totally relate to all the stuff that you had in that magazine. When you were a kid, the kind of houses that you used to go up to, and uh, crap you'd get. The crap you'd get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, there'd always be. There'd be the dentist's house, right? And you would get floss. Either floss. Oh, they would right? either give you floss or apples. Right, or like an apple and a toothbrush for after. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hate the, the, when they try to get their ideology on you like yeah. that, what? you know? Just give me the wrapped chocolate candy. That's, right. all, that's all I Sit. care about. Gum. Bazooka Joe bubble gum. Thank you. Mm -hmm. the, you know what? The big score, though, was like ding-dongs, you know, like the real cake <laughs> stuff. Except then your mom would look at it for about half an hour to see if there are any, like, needle, needle punctures in there. <laughs> well, that's always a fun thing to do, too. On Halloween Day, you go to the supermarket and buy nothing but apples and razor blades. <laughs> and go right up to the thing and go, this will be up, thank you. That's all for me. Wait, and then you have to, like, count to make sure you have an, enough apples and enough. <laughs> Wait a second, I need one more razor blade. <laughs> and you would talk to yourself online the whole time. <laughs> Where are your straight pins? I also need straight pins. You know what's really interesting? It's the only time of, the, you know, like, they talk about Christmas and the holiday season and how everybody comes out and you get to know everybody and you all get closer and so on. No way. Mm. It's Halloween. You find out what your parents think about the other parents on the block because you come back and you got an apple. Like, this is a person that, you know, they borrow the lawnmower, this and that and the other. You watch each other's kids. You come back with an apple from their house and that's it. They're murderers. Yeah. They're looking through that. I see a slash there. Yeah. Throw it away. Throw it away. Oh. Remember, remember when you found the house that had, like, the king-size Snicker bars and you had to tell all, all, your whole gang, dude, oh, the house dude. on the corner, man. The major <laughs> then, score. Yeah, you thought you'd get a major score. Then you get there and they already ran out of the big ones and they give you the bite size. And you <laughs> yeah, used to get or, so or bummed like out. broken in half. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but they'd have a line all the way, you know, up to the door and because the word got out. The one that I really <laughs> liked was there was always somebody on your block, like, you know, some guy that just lived in a house by himself that got way into things, you know, way too much into it. You'd come up, there'd be like haunted house noises, <laughs> and there'd be weird lights flickering, and he'd jump out onto the porch, you know, in a diaper and a mask, and yell, boo. <laughs> you know, he's 29, he doesn't have a job. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then he's like, you know, you like open your bag, and he's like, remembers, oh yeah, I gotta have candy or something to give him. He gives you like lunch meat. <laughs> Here you go, kid. <laughs> I used to hate the ring baloney. <laughs> I used to hate the people that would give you just pennies. <laughs> oh yeah, pennies. Or or old people with ribbon candy. They would like hand you the dish. Yeah. And it would be, you know, it was like a year old. And you'd have to like oh. the whole. It would be a clump. <laughs> <laughs> Concertina wire. Yeah. That's like it, it is. That is like razor wire. No, I know. You could like spread that across prison walls. <laughs> I'm not doing that, man. Ribbon candy. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'd have to go out, and uh, your mother would give you the little orange box. You're going to trick-or-treat for UNICEF this yeah. year. Yeah. Oh. oh so you got to do that. Can't it just be for me today that I go out and get candy for me? Do I have to save the world? <laughs> I never handed that money in. What about me? Yeah. You oh, you were one of those. Of course. You go around with the UNICEF little orange milk carton. And oh, not. boy, like they're going to miss the 79 cents I collected. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a whole village starves no, no, because no, you don't yeah. give them 75 like, cents. I guarantee you, you take that money. Like the first time you do it and you go out to like a store and you buy a yo-yo, like as the cash register, oh. you hear screams, you know, in your little head, you hear screams oh. of starving people. Here's <laughs> little that, Maria. That yo-yo could feed my family for a month. <laughs> Come on. Mark, little Maria's it. village is starving now because Opie's eating a yo-yo. <laughs> <laughs> Trick-or-treating is to be so much fun. <laughs> what happened to baked goods? They don't uh, do baked yeah. goods anymore. hate that anyway. Yeah. Who wants baked goods? I'm just bringing they up stuff. You never get to keep it. You know what? The one thing that you learn, it, it was, I, I was watching this movie. Who was? Oh, and there was like a prostitute, and she'd been like working for about a week, and she hadn't seen her John or anything. And she's in a taxi cab, and she starts stashing part of the money. Uh oh. You know, for when, you know, and he's like, no, man, I'm giving you it all, right? That's me at Halloween when I was a kid. You know, because, like, you know you're going to have to hand over the candy to your parents. They're going to give you one piece a day. Yes. So, you know, I had huge pockets. I stuffed it in my underwear, blah, blah. <laughs> like, half my take would be in my pants. And I'd give the rest to her. Yeah. Like, you holding out on me? <laughs> <laughs> this don't look like all the candy. <laughs> you know what we do around here. I Fuck will pimp slap your bitch ass if you don't hand over I the don't, Snickers. I don't care if you're six. I'm going to spread you across that wall. 
wall. We used to have to dump it out on the living room floor, and then my, my dad would go through it right in front of us, and, and he'd be like, oh, this this looks a little ripped here. I better take that one. And then <laughs> later on, you see him munching, out, uh, munching on all the good stuff. <laughs> or or if they're really mean, they'll, like, they'll rip it in front. Oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah. getting stopped in the country by like a cop who goes, bam, whoa, look at that headlight. <laughs> so then you're just stuck with some candy corn and something stupid. <laughs> Always at the bottom of the bag, the yeah. candy corn. There you go. What was your What was your least favorite candy? Candy corn. Candy corn. corn. Yeah. I didn't like that. I also don't like those big, puffy orange peanut things. Those marshmallow oh, yeah, yeah. oh, yeah. yeah. It's just that uh. mealy, ugh. It just makes you nauseous if you finish one. Yes. Ugh. <laughs> What's yours, Mark? I, I always hated junior mints, but mm -hmm. it could have been because of this really horrible accident involving them when I was younger. All right, we can end with this. Today. <laughs> no, I, I, can't. I can't. It's not for public consumption. It's a bizarre really junior oh, mint accident. All right, I guess we're not going to end with that. I lost my entire mother's side of the family. I didn't like those other little things, too. The, uh, the chocolate babies. Remember those, those things? Chocolate babies. <laughs> they, they don't have those anymore. No, they sure don't. They had a nickname that wasn't too uh, <laughs> yeah. easy, to tell you the truth. But I never really liked the taste of them. Oh, my God. Well, it's... Chocolate baby. Remember? <laughs> now I know what you're talking about. It was. They were, and that's what they were called. <laughs> we better get the hell off the radio. <laughs> All right, Mark. Well, thanks for stopping by. Oh, my pleasure. If you want to know what Mark looks like, they have a cute little picture of him in his little magazine. Are you? No, you got your picture I, in the I'm picture? actually on the cover of the November oh, issue. You're a hot I, babe. I, look at you. I look a lot more delicate when I'm naked. <laughs> you remind me of Sam Kinison, actually. And anyone else say that? Uh, Especially when you're, when you're wearing the uh, glasses. <laughs> All right. Well, Mark Golan from Maxim, it's always a pleasure. He's our pal now. Uh, you know. If you're walking by one of the newsstands, please pick up the latest issue of Maxim. We barely discussed it, but trust me, you'll like it. Please, you'll enjoy it. I need new clothes. All right, man. <laughs> Matt Devote's up next. We'll do this all again tomorrow at 3. Thanks for listening.